Ever since becoming a professional pianist, one thought has always haunted me, which is, I wish my hands were ten percent bigger, just ten percent, so that I could reach more notes and play fast passages more smoothly without straining myself. And it's not just me. As a YouTuber, I see a lot of comments, commenters who talk about having hands that are too small. This is just a tiny percentage of the pianists who have the same problems. This is the dark secret of the piano world: is that over 80% of females and 25% of males have hands that are too small for the modern keyboard. They spend their entire lives playing piano on hard mode, and they never realize that smaller-sized keyboards would solve many of their problems. It's a surprisingly simple solution. I don't need to get surgery to increase my hand size by 10%. All I need to do is to buy a keyboard with narrower sized keys. However, if you try to buy one, whether online or in a piano store, you will fail. Why is this the case? Why don't piano and keyboard companies such as Yamaha, Roland, Kawai, etc. Whose sole purpose is to sell more pianos? Why don't they offer an alternate size for pianists with smaller hands? This is the mystery that we're going to unravel today. You see, the modern piano wasn't always this current size. Back in Chopin and Beethoven's day, there were pianos of all shapes and sizes. Here is the legendary French pianist Jean Yves、um, something playing on an original piano that Chopin himself played on. I would like to tell you a little bit more about this particular piano. It was built in 1848 for Chopin, and it was played by him in his recital in London in 1848. It was really a challenge for me to play all this music on, on this piano because it is quite different from the modern piano that I'm used to. Everything is kind of on a smaller scale. The keys, every key is shorter and even more narrower than on a modern piano. Which means that all my distances were kind of wrong. If I would make a jump or play an octave, I was always off at the beginning by just this, this much. Which means it's it's a note wrong, basically. It wasn't until the late 1800s when the modern piano was standardized at its current key width, 6.5 inches between an octave, or about 0.93 inches per key. When I found out about smaller sized keyboards, I knew that I had to play on one myself. Let's go back a few months to October second, two thousand twenty-one. It was two days before my concert in Heidelberg, Germany. Instead of spending the day practicing, I drove two point five hours to Stuttgart, Germany, to play on Sirius six point zero, Europe's only six point zero inch octave keyboard. It felt amazing. La Campanella. Was so much easier to play on the slightly narrower keys, and with only two days to go before my concert, I wanted to test the hypothesis: Will playing on a smaller-sized keyboard cause me to play worse on a regular-sized keyboard afterwards? As I found out during my concert, the answer is a clear no. I played better than I ever had, especially for the more difficult pieces of my program, such as La Campanella and Fight for Freedom. Playing on narrower keys taught my hands what a relaxed, unstretched position feels like, which carried over its benefits even to the regular-sized keyboard. After I tried out the smaller keyboard. I realized that this would solve many of my roadblocks for practicing difficult pieces. I knew that I had to buy one at all costs, whether it would cost me five hundred, five thousand, or even fifty thousand dollars. But of course, we know that smaller-sized keyboards are impossible to buy online or in any music store. It turns out that there is only one place in all of America 
where you can get a smaller piano keyboard. And that is in Titusville, Pennsylvania, a tiny rural town about two hours north of Pittsburgh, close to the border of Canada. I took my dog Cooper and embarked on a six hour road trip. I visited a man named David Steinbuehler, a textile factory owner who got into making pianos as a passion project. All right, guys, so I'm really happy to be here with David Steinbuehler, and he is the man behind all of this incredible innovation being done with the keys being different sizes, okay? Since the 1990s, David has been the only manufacturer of reduced size keyboards in America. And he does it all from a small subsection on the second floor of his Titusville factory's main operations. By himself, he coded thousands of lines to create an automated manufacturing process for high quality ivory piano keys at a smaller width. When I played on these keys, the quality was indistinguishable from the usual keys you find on pianos by Steinway and Yamaha. One man, working part-time on his own, was able to build a product that solves millions of pianists' problems. The reason I visited him was because I wanted to give my electronic keyboard, the Kawai MP11SE to him, so that he could replace the current keys with keys of a narrower width. The usual 88 keys that you find on any other digital piano in the world has been shrunken from here to here. It will cost me over $5,000, but it's worth it. After all, I was willing to pay over $50,000 for this. I asked him, how much money have you made from all of this work over the past 30 years? David, how much money have you made in total from this project? <laughs> oh, no, I just put money in. We don't make any money. So it's like negative like 5,000, negative 20,000? No, million. Negative, <laughs> negative million. No, easily. Really? Yeah. That's right, this kind of specialized, high accuracy manufacturing is definitely not easy or cheap. But still, David was able to achieve this by himself. Piano manufacturers like Yamaha and Steinway have thousands of engineers working full time on countless upgrades to their pianos. Every year you hear about the latest improvements to sound quality, hammer action, the functions available for cool synth sounds and flashing screens on the keyboard, etc. But the one upgrade that makes a far greater impact to the customer's playing experience, more than any cosmetic or technical feature, is missing a keyboard that fits the pianist's hands. So let's try to answer the question. Why aren't piano manufacturers making narrower keyboards? After doing much research, I've consolidated my findings to four big reasons. The first is tradition. The piano is one of the most prestigious instruments that fundamentally transformed musical history. The vast majority of composers and songwriters throughout history used the piano as their primary instrument, and the layout of 88 keys at its current size dimensions is considered almost sacred and no one wants to be known as the company that breaks tradition. My response is, look, it's 2022. There's people playing piano on virtual reality dressed as anime characters. Surely this idea is less revolutionary. The second big reason is, you guessed it, money. 
I reached out to a representative from one of the big four piano companies, asking them why they're not making smaller sized keyboards. And this was their response. I acknowledge that some players would appreciate a smaller keyboard, but the research and development resources required to design and manufacture a smaller sized keyboard would exceed the potential revenue earned in sales, making it not financially viable. I disagree that only a small proportion of piano players would benefit from this, and I'll soon explain why. But first, this response shows that money is what motivates these companies, not the idea that they could change someone's life. Oh, a tenth. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> Countless pianists' lives with a modification that someone like David Steinbuehler was able to do by himself. Oh, oh, oh geez. My hands look enormous. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> should, uh, should I? I'll just let you do it. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> just seeing. <laughs> Just seeing what it looks like. But let's address the issue of how many pianists would actually benefit from this. My hand span is 8 inches from pinky to thumb. As I showed earlier, 80% of females and 25% of males have hands under 8.5 inches hand span. This is not a small proportion of the piano playing community. Why 8.5 inches? 8.5 inches or 21 centimeters is in fact the distance of a tenth interval between two notes on the modern keyboard. Tenths are not really written in most popular music, but ninths are found all over the place. And only a 8.5 inch hand span can comfortably play a knife. Furthermore, when you're playing fast passages with lots of arpeggios or jumps, such as Chopin's Waterfall, Ballad No. 1 Coda, Hungarian Rhapsody No. 2, La Campanella, Rachmaninoff's Prelude in G Minor, Music Moment No. 4, or even Beethoven's Rage Against the Lost Penny, having a smaller travel distance between the keys helps so much more to let your fingers get to the note faster. At higher speeds, every millisecond counts. There is also a growing body of evidence that hand sizes under 8.5 inches are more prone to injury. In a study by Yoshimura and Chesky, researchers measured the pain experienced by pianists as they played a chords passage from Debussy. Starting at 220 millimeters hand span, the pain starts increasing exponentially as the hands get smaller. Researcher Rhonda Boyle notes that pianists with hand spans above 8.6 inches experience no pain. These findings are consistent with another study done in 2002 by Nakoda Sakai. All my life, I have experienced pain when playing some advanced pieces. And like many other pianists, I just don't talk about it. The third big reason is stigma, which seems a little subjective, but I will explain. Because the improvement of narrower keys benefits more females than males, it seems that piano manufacturers don't want to be known as the company that creates a feminine keyboard. For some reason, there is a myth amongst the piano playing population of all genders that having smaller hands is somehow a sign of inadequacy. Women would come and they would be embarrassed about their hands. And I would tell them, there's nothing wrong with your hand. The women are embarrassed because they can't play the same range? Right. Okay. Profound discrimination. 
and it appears that piano manufacturers don't want their brand name to be associated with this undertone. This is a sensitive topic, especially for men. You know what they say about men with small hands. The myth that hand size is somehow correlated with member size has made its way into mainstream consciousness. You might think I'm joking, but I genuinely believe that this stigma is a barrier to male pianists openly speaking out about this issue. For example, Daniel Bramboim, one of the most famous pianists of our time, plays on a customized Steinway with narrower keys made just for him. And so did the legendary pianist Joseph Hoffman. But neither of these men ever revealed publicly that their pianos have different keys. And even myself, when I thought of making this video, this was the first thought that came to my mind, as juvenile as it seems. The last reason is what I believe to be the most important. Because honestly, the other three reasons pale in comparison to this fourth and final reason, which is lack of awareness. People just don't know that narrower sized keyboards exist. It's actually quite funny if it wasn't so sad. So many pianists all over YouTube, universities, and classrooms all around the world complain and wish they had larger hands. But like myself, none of them ever thought to ask the piano companies to make a smaller sized keyboard. For 26 years of my piano playing life, I never knew that narrower sized keyboards even existed. I've talked with hundreds of pianists, taken classes at Juilliard, Peabody, NYU, performed at Carnegie Hall, watched thousands of YouTube videos about the piano, read thousands of articles and internet discussions on the piano, and yet not one of them even mentioned the possibility of narrower sized keyboards. I remember in mid-September of 2021, I was looking through the Piano World forums about something completely unrelated, and then I stumbled upon this forum post about the Dallas International Piano Competition, which at the time allowed contestants to play on alternate sized pianos if they chose. When I read this post, my brain was somewhat confused. It was kind of like looking through an old closet and seeing something you used to love but have forgotten about. An old toy, a book, or a piece of clothing. At first, the object looks a bit foreign, but upon closer glance, it becomes strikingly familiar. And then you realize this was meant for me. That was the feeling I got when I touched the DS 6.0 keyboard for the first time. It was a feeling of coming home after a long trip and knowing that here I could finally be comfortable. <laughs>